welcome to Spread, Spread the, the Word! First one of the new year. Woo 2021, guys. 2021. So, um, I am very excited to tell you guys about Better Luck Next Time by Julia Claiborne Johnson, which, um, we read her first book, Be, be Frank With Me. Or just Be Frank With Me? Be Frank, just frank, be frank. Be frank With Me. Um, frank. for our very first book club book. Baby book club. Baby book, Baby book club. There were only like seven of us. of us. Yeah, I think there were eight. When was that? 2017? Um, 2016. This book is inspired by um, her father, actually. Um, so she um, set this book in Reno, Nevada um, during the 19, early 1940s, late 1930s. You might not know this, but um, Reno is like quickie divorce land, especially back then. That's where like women of means would go to get a quickie divorce. This is specifically set at like a ranch where women of means would go to get a divorce from their husbands. So you, you stay there, you gain residency and you can divorce your husband. And, um, it's not like, it's not a 50, 50 split or it, the, the, the terms are favorable to you. And so you have a lot of very wealthy women who's like their money, their money is their own, um, whether by earning it or, inher or inheritance, it is their own. But because they were previously married, in every other state, it would be their husbands were they mm -hmm. to be divorced. So, <clears throat> apparently, J.C. J.'s father, reportedly, was a Ranch hand ranch. at one of these ranches. And um, that's where she got the idea. And so the book opens and follows um, Ward. Ward is, um, a, he is a, a ranch hand. And at first glance, are cowboys. And just doing things cowboys Like do. sexy cowboys? Yeah, they look good. They look good. They look Hard real good. That is okay. explicitly <laughs> part of why they are hired. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, they are there to both, like, actually do cowboy stuff. Like actual ranching Actual things. ranching things. <laughs> okay, actual, yes. like, like, things that take... Like, take care of the horses. Right. Like, take care of the house. They do all the serving and, like, the washing up and stuff, mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. So, well, so they're both valet and yeah. cowboy. <laughs> okay. But then yeah. they're also, like, just arm candy. And like mm -hmm. there for the women's consumption mm -hmm. of Are they them. fulfilling sexual favors? No, they're not, not supposed no, to no, sleep no, with no, them. No, okay. no, they're not supposed to. Okay. Because also that can mess up their divorces. Right. Right. That makes sense. Doesn't mean it doesn't happen. It happens in Reno. Stays in mm -hmm. Reno. Yeah. Correct. Okay. And um, we're specifically following um, two women, Emily and Nina. Nina is a movie star. Yeah, or was a movie oh, star. Yeah. She's a very feisty, sexy lady. She's there for like the fourth or fifth time. And she just, who knows why she keeps getting married and losing these men. And um, Emily is the other character that we follow a lot. And Emily is, it's her first time there. She has, she, she's left her husband after he was philandering, losing money, um, just like emotional blackmail. Yeah. He's the worst. Yeah. He's the absolute worst. Like the worst. worst envisionment of like man of that time. Oh, as yeah. You can imagine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Entitled with nothing to back it right, up. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And still, an ab like and and just not still abuse because that makes it sound like anything abusive. else would be like justified of being an abusive yeah. asshole. But like he's like. <laughs> like what just happened? What? Life at the ranch is like, I mean, it's like summer camp for bougie grown-ups. <laughs> yeah. Basically, like, they have a masquerade. They have, mm -hmm. they go on outings. They then also go on an outing to their lawyers. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Anyways. Okay, question. Sorry. Yes. Ward, is he kind of like um, a Nick Great Gatsby thing where he's kind of, he's in it, uh, but he's more observing? Or is he in it? Uh, both. Uh -huh. It's both. It's a little bit it's of It's a both. little bit of both. He's okay. more in it than Nick He is. gets more fleshed okay. out as the book goes on. Mm -hmm. At the beginning, I would I, I would definitely say he was a Nick. Okay. Yeah. But as it goes on, he gets more fleshed out. Oh, oh, I was going to say, it, it has a lot of very funny parts. Like, oh, the dialogue gosh, yes. is very good, and the there's, like, is some very smart. comedic moments. One party, um, Nina and Emily, it's a costume party, and mm -hmm. Nina goes as, um, as uh, as bottom from Midsummer Night's Dream, so the ass. <laughs> yeah. And she gets real hot, and they got yeah, a little too that. drunk, and she was like, "I just, <laughs> I'm hot." And Emily, her uh, partner in crime, said, "Well, then take off 
the bottom costume. <laughs> and she meant the head, because the head is actually, like, the, the donkey the bottom right, yeah. from yeah. Midsummer Night's Dream. Um, and then said, she, uh, Nina translates that to, I will disrobe. <laughs> and so she just takes off her clothes. <laughs> and so then she just walks into a party naked. So, um, yeah. they were having a the, time. Yeah. yeah. So just, there's lots of mm -hmm. hilarity to be had. They yeah. got them fine. Everything was fine. You'll right. do anything to avoid swamp ass. Yeah. Especially when you're bottom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. True. True. Uh, Roy said never. <laughs> yep, yeah, that's, that's it. it. Yeah. <laughs> The book I read for January is The World Between Blinks, mm -hmm. which you might have heard us talk about a little bit earlier this month, because um, Ryan Grodden is a local author, and she came into this signing, and we were doing an Authors in Conversation event with her and Amy Kaufman on January 28th. Yes, this is really cool. This is um, Ryan's first middle grade book. It also is fun because it has a starting point in Charleston, the, all of the um, main two characters are gathering with their family on Folly Beach because their grandmother died recently and they're kind of like packing up her house uh, to sell it. Um, so it's like a little sad, but um, from like a local's perspective, cool because, mm -hmm. you know, they mentioned some prominent points. Specifically, as you can see here, the Morris Island Lighthouse. Oh, fun! Yeah. So the whole premise of the book is um, that there is this world the world between blinks, mm -hmm. um, where things that are lost go. What separates it from our world is the unknown, mm -hmm. which I imagine as some sort of like misty thing mm -hmm. with like sort of an almost consciousness. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they end up finding a map of their grandmothers that has an X on it, they think, and Marisol is the um, girl cousin and then Jake is the boy cousin. Marisol has been really sad because she doesn't want them to sell the house and she just feels like if they could find the treasure, which is what she thinks that the map is showing, they could have enough money to like keep it. And then um, she also is very good at finding things. Like whenever keys go missing, her parents always are like, Marisol, can you look for the keys? And she's always like sort of, she has like sticky fingers on this. She's a Hufflepuff. <laughs> yeah. So um, she's good at finding things and Jake feels like he's good at losing things. So like he, Slytherin. his... <laughs> His mom is like works for the State Department and they move around to a lot of different countries and he feels like he's always losing friends. His dad left and Aww. he lost him and mm. um, now his grandmother and stuff. Um, so they both have those sort of like two like pulling things and they go out to the Morris Town or sorry the Morris Island Lighthouse because um, that's where the X seems like it is. Um, it is because of erosion um, is just the lighthouse the island that was there about like is a now the world between blinks is what you find out. So um, it's like a point of like half in the world, our world, half in the other world. So that's how they end up getting um, kind of pulled over, they think. So they start running into people and places who have gotten lost, which is really cool from like, um, my mom has already picked some up for her fifth grade classes. So there's a fun cool tie-in to like ancient Egypt and Amelia Earhart they meet Ooh. there, who becomes like one of the characters that helps them out. Um, there's some other cool stuff. They end up at like um, an ancient Roman market a lot that got lost. Also a frost fair, which I guess oh, yeah, in the yeah. mini ice age. On the Thames. The Thames froze over like 24 times or something and the, they would have these ice fairs on the Thames. Hmm. So they get picked up and then um, they have to go be cataloged by the um, curators. Because <laughs> they're lost things. Oh. <laughs> yeah. um, and there's one head curator called the administrator and they're like, what they find out is um, they get a, they get like a, a necklace that's like an hourglass, and that is all their memories. So the longer you stay in the world between blinks, the more memories you lose until oh you my don't really God. remember anything. So um, they're like, and it, as long as you stay uncatalogued from the curators, they could still potentially leave again. So they get roped into stealing a ledger book from this one um, guy, Christopher Creaturo. He gives them to steal this ledger book, and then it turns out he's he wanted it so that he could send stuff back to the regular mm. world, and that's called. So he does that and it's causing some ruptures and they think that like the world between blinks might start to fall apart. So they go on this chase to try to find him in that ledger book um, before they are cataloged by the administrator and <laughs> before they lose any memories. Mm. And along the way they figure out um, like why they have their special gifts and also what it like Jake learns some things, Marisol learns some things, it's very good. Um, yes, I don't want to give it away. It's like some like revel. <laughs> Some, like nice revelations uh, I think that we probably all read about as 10 year olds and we're like <laughs> yes this is a good thing to be thinking about at this mm -hmm. time you know yeah that's great it sounds yeah. good
Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and start. Um, I read The Midnight Library. Pop the screen up for you, because I don't have it in hand right now. Um, so, <laughs> it is about a woman named Nora Seed. Uh, she has been dealt a couple of life blows lately. She uh, broke up with her fiance. She is uh, out of touch with her brother. They used to be in a band together and she dropped out of that. They were about to make it big and then she freaked out oh, no. and dropped out. So of course the rest of the bandmates are like, well, my life sucks now because of you, you mm -hmm. know? She was supposed to go on this trip with her best friend to Australia and she backed out of that last minute. So she's not done a lot of follow through, it, feel, it seems. Like she's just not sure of what she wants or who she is. She is just generally not happy with life. She's upset because she's got, she got fired from her job. She goes home, she's upset. And then the catalyst, her cat dies. Voltaire, Volts, that's what she called him. Oh, God. And she kills herself that night. What? Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Holy cuss. That's, that's, that escalated very quickly. I know. Quickly I'm and like, it's only in that, you're pages. like, it's like 10 pages that I'm like, okay, but then something else happens. So at least there's that. <laughs> well, it starts off, she's in the library with her mentor and it's like 20 years before Nora decides to commit puke commit suicide mm. it's like marking time you know it's coming yes like the first sentence you know it's coming oh. okay and in the scene she finds out that her dad has died um in this first initial scene time jump into her early 30s all of this like shit is just like coming down on her she commits suicide and she finds herself in um the midnight library which is a library full of um, books that contain all of her various different lives that she could have lived. Mm. And the librarian is that mentor that was there with her when she got the news that her father died. Mm. So she's a librarian and she's kind of guiding her and she's like, okay, you're in the Midnight Library, you're in a place between life and death, you have all of these different lives that you can try out, which one do you want to try first? Mm. And she's like, I don't want to try any lives. This is why I did this. <laughs> um, but the first thing that she has to do when she gets in the library is she has to look at her book of regrets, which is a giant oh ton of oh that. God, I'm know. sorry. No. No. I would be out so fast. <laughs> and she has to like read it. I have that it. running through my head all of the time. The reason behind that is the librarian says, you need to know your regrets so that you know what your like deepest regrets are so that you can say like, well, I want to go to the life where I made this choice instead of this choice. Oh, so you like avoid okay. your worst regrets. So yes. Your most regrets. The things that we all wish we could play out. Yes. Okay. So she's trying out, out, out all of these different lives. She's realizing that like, you know, like she tries out the life where she didn't drop out of the band. Mm. And she was like an Olympic, like was going to be an Olympic swimmer when she was mm. younger. She regrets not doing that because she feels like that's what killed her father because her father was like, like, that's the oh only way God. he showed love was through this, like, sport. And so by her not doing a sport, he died? Yes, that's what she oh thinks. Oh my yeah. goodness, that's so sad. Yeah, so, okay. like, she just has all of these, like, regrets and just worrying about how her decisions affected, affected other people. Other people. Uh -huh. Yeah. And kind of having to come to terms with that. So, it was really good. I really enjoyed it. It's a really quick read. It kind of reminds me of Una Out of Order. Oh, I wish yeah. I were to comp it to something. Yeah, that. okay, yeah. that makes sense. I feel like everybody will see themselves in it, uh -huh. regardless of it's your okay. level of depression at this time or at any other time. I mean, just that book of regrets right there. You yes, saw everybody has that. Yeah. We were like, no. You were like, no, get it away. <laughs> Don't want to touch that. Yeah. Um, like, hard I like not I to touch to that force every me, day. Force it away. <laughs> I don't do a good job of it. I don't want it to be placed in front of Yeah. In physical form. It is good. I recommend it. Go forth. Go forth. Into and your life. Conquer your regrets. <laughs> All done. All right. Well, thanks for tuning into this episode of Spread the Word. We are in talks of possibly turning Spread the Word into a podcast. So if you have feelings... Let us know. Tell us. Tell we us want to know. No, so yeah, sorry. tell us how you feel in the comments. And um, we do have a working title that we are not going to reveal to you right now, but it's really exciting and fun. And Ooh. there's merch. Yes, there's there merch. will be merch for sure. The merch for this will be... It's not made yet, Julia. <laughs> so it's just in our heads. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> um, but it will, it will fit with our overall theme and you will love it. So yeah. True, true. Thanks for tuning in for Spread the Word. We love you guys. See you next month. Bye. Bye.